this is everything is not okay. Ashton Kutcher is best known for playing Michael Kelso on that 70s show for eight seasons and pranking celebrities on MTV's Punked. He's known for his fun personality and goofy sense of humor, both on and off screen. However, he has a darker, more complex side that Hollywood rarely sees. Over the years, Ashton Kutcher has finally revealed a 25-year secret. What is that secret? The following revelations will give you a different perspective on him. Read on to find out. Do you like this character? If so, please comment one below. Before we delve into Ashton's 25-year secret, let's take a look at that 70s show, which took Ashton to new heights. What secrets are hidden in that 70s show? Let's explore with me behind the scenes, the dark secret behind that 70s show. The untold story of that 1970s program. That 70s show first aired in August 1998 and followed the Foreman family as seen through the eyes of Eric Foreman, the adolescent son, and his tight-knit circle of friends. The handsome and charismatic Michael Kelso, the easygoing stoner with a defiant side, and the adorable but naive foreign exchange student Fez were all part of this group. They were accompanied by Jackie Burkhardt, the affluent and slightly conceited girl from their school, and Donna Pinciotti, Eric's savvy and down-to-earth neighbor. Despite its comedic veneer, the series dealt with timeless themes that affect all generations of teenagers. Substance misuse and underage drinking were among the topics covered, as were the highs and lows of relationships and overcoming academic constraints. Despite all the teasing and snarky banter, the characters' genuine concern and camaraderie shone through. The on-screen romance between Jackie and Kelso is a prime illustration of this connection. Their romance was on full display in the fifth episode of season one, when they kissed in front of a mesmerized audience of 10 million people. Mila Kunis was only 14 years old when Ashton was 19. When asked about her first on-screen kiss with Ashton Kutcher, Mila Kunis recalled the butterflies in her stomach. The scenario required a more personal moment than she had expected, even though it was early in their filming schedule. She had assumed that it would be a simple kiss. To put her at ease, Ashton Kutcher was thoughtful and soothed her, despite her initial nervousness. But everything changed when Hyde's actor Danny Masterson made a casual comment. Even more unsettling for Kunis was Masterson's playful offer of $10 to French kiss her, which Kutcher turned down. The incident, which was intended as a playful prank, has now been seen through a more critical prism. Many people considered Kunis's sensitivity and timidity throughout her early career endearing, and now she's talking about it. Mila Kunis has been very forthright about how the writers of that 1970s program made her feel uncomfortable during her character's romance sequences. Except for Tofu's character, she admitted that she was practically forced to kiss every male character on the show. It was distressing for Kunis and her parents, and she worried about the effect it would have on her. Kunis openly admitted that these on-screen kisses were disturbing. She had little say in the subject and felt the writers and producers hadn't given it much thought. She said it was all wrong and couldn't understand why the authors didn't think about the consequences of their choices. Everyone is familiar with the horrifying Hollywood tales. It makes you question what happened behind the scenes if Mila Kunis was compelled to do such uncomfortable things on screen. Ashton sighed. How did his family react? Did his fame cause any family controversy? Join me on a journey to discover Ashton's family secrets. Ashton's family's secret. With an average of 11.7 .7 million viewers across 25 episodes, that 1970s show's first season was a smashing hit. Many were both impressed and disappointed by Ashton Kutcher's meteoric rise to stardom. A lot of people were happy for him when he became famous, but some thought he was only good-looking and didn't have any actual talent. Michael, Ashton's twin brother, felt the effects of his brother's achievement the most strongly among his detractors. When Michael thought Ashton was getting more praise and admiration than he was, he confessed to having emotions of envy. His emotional stability was severely compromised by this harbored resentment. When news of Michael's health problems spread, things changed drastically. The events that transpired after Ashton saw his twin brother collapse on the hospital bed had a profound impact on him. A fresh outlook on life and work was bestowed upon Ashton by this terrifying ordeal. 
Diane Kutcher, Ashton's mum, didn't find out she was expecting twins until she was on her way to the hospital to give birth. Michael, Ashton's twin brother, was born five minutes after Ashton by Diane. Because Michael was born weighing only four pounds, the doctors were worried right away. Because of difficulties during delivery, including severe oxygen deprivation, Diane did not realize that her kid would have serious health problems in the future. A modest degree of cerebral palsy, CP, which impacts mobility, balance, and posture, was eventually identified with Michael. Cerebral palsy, CP, affects a person's capacity to regulate their muscles and is the most prevalent kind of motor disability in children. It arises from either aberrant brain development or harm to the growing brain. The seriousness of Michael's health was not immediately apparent to the Kutcher family. They overcame obstacles by highlighting the similarities rather than the disparities among their siblings. After some thought, Michael recalled their childhood and how their family never made them feel different. He and Ashton just saw each other for who they were, talented individuals with special abilities. Michael Kutcher reminisced about the time Ashton insisted Michael accompany him on any sleepovers because of how much Ashton cared for his twin brother. Ashton felt terrible about how his health and normalcy were in comparison to Michael's predicament. But when Michael started showing signs of the flu in eighth grade, their life took a tragic turn. His rapid diagnosis of viral myocarditis by the medical community led to the expulsion of his enlarged heart and the subsequent need for a heart transplant. With only three or four weeks to live, Michael was given a bleak prognosis. Ashton was there for Michael through thick and thin, providing unwavering support and solace. When Michael stopped responding, Ashton was left to deal with a deep feeling of powerlessness as the matter approached a crucial stage. A harsh action was even discussed by Ashton. He begged his parents for permission to be sacrificed so that his brother Michael could live, and he wondered if his own heart would be a good match for Michael. Luckily, a donor was located in just 24 hours, all because of a victim from another state. Michael was rescued from what appeared to be an impending death by undergoing a heart transplant, which was a successful operation. I think this will surprise you, but did you know that this movie star has a criminal past? How could someone with a good heart like Ashton commit a crime? What did he do? Let me go on to find out. Ashton Kutcher was arrested in high school. During his high school years, Christopher Ashton Kutcher and his cousin were accomplices in a school burglary. They were planning to steal the test answers for the next session. Biographer Mark Shapiro states that Kutcher's parents allowed him to spend the night in detention due to their anger at his behavior. Subsequently, Kutcher recalled the event, stating, My stepdad assured me that he would allow me to spend the night at his house if I were ever found guilty. I was in jail when I called him and told him that. After saying good night, he ended the call. A three-year probationary period and 180 hours of community service were the consequences of Kutcher's legal difficulties. He had a rough go of it already, between being cut from school athletics and his girlfriend breaking up with him right before senior prom. This event had a profound effect on him, and he carried its memory for a long time. During his 2017 acceptance speech at Drake University, Kutcher made a light-hearted allusion to his history of legal troubles. With a mischievous grin, he reflected on the lasting impact of his deferred judgment for felony burglary on his life and joked about being the first person to receive this medal. Also, he mentioned that when you have the deferred judgment removed from your record and apply for a worldwide entrance pass, they will remember, I guess you could say it's permanent. During his time at the University of Iowa, Ashton Kutcher's wild lifestyle led to significant trouble. But one woman changed Ashton completely. Who was this woman? How did she change Ashton? Let's explore this interesting journey of Ashton. Ashton's big break. He was eventually evicted from his flat because of his wild parties and disruptive behavior. He frequently slept through the night and woke up with no memory of what happened the night before. During this chaotic time, a turning point came during one of his inebriated adventures. At the Iowa City Airport bar, a lady approached Ashton and proposed that he give modeling a go. Kutcher entered the Iowa Fresh Faces modeling competition, knowing full well that he had nothing to lose. He was taken aback by his unexpected victory, which led him to explore opportunities beyond the confines of conventional education. 
As a result of his sudden and unexpected success, Ashton felt emboldened to go to the International Modeling and Talent Association Convention in New York City. Even though Josh Duhamel was his competitive opponent, the event was a watershed moment for him. Several modeling agencies were interested in him because of his striking appearance and impressive height of 6 feet 2 inches. Next modeling agency signed him as a client not long after. When Kutcher decided to devote himself entirely to his modeling profession, he abruptly ended his scholastic studies by dropping out of school. Following this new direction, he landed prominent ads, including those for Calvin Klein and Zoo York, a skating brand. Ashton Kutcher was fiercely committed to acting, even if he had some success in the modeling industry. He didn't waste any time seizing the chance to audition for comedy sitcoms in Los Angeles. Surprisingly, he was cast in two different roles on different shows. Initially, Kutcher was excited to take on the part of a cowboy surfer in a one-hour television drama. But he ultimately felt he wasn't a good match for the role and turned down the offer. Wind on Water was a cheap adventure series that lasted for all six episodes before being cancelled. His second acting role was as Michael Kelso on that 70s show. This part was pivotal in Kutcher's career, catapulting him to superstardom and establishing his legacy in show business. A turning point in Kutcher's career came with his starring part, notwithstanding his early supporting roles in romantic comedies like Coming Soon and Down to You and the criminal thriller Reindeer Games. The stoner comedy dude, Where's My Automobile, in which he played the role of Jesse, is about two pals who, after a crazy night of partying, wake up confused about where they left their automobile. Screenwriter and screenplay editor Philip Stark, who was familiar with Kutcher's comedic timing and manner from that 70s show, wrote the picture to showcase Kutcher's abilities. The film's commercial success was evident, even if some criticized it for being unfunny. With a cheap budget of about $13 million, Kutcher's humorous charm struck a chord with audiences in Dude Where's My Car, which made over $73 million worldwide, despite mixed reviews. But just as he was achieving success in his career, Ashton's love life suffered a tragic loss. His date was murdered by a serial killer. Do you know this shocking story? Join me in discovering Ashton's tragic life story. His date was killed by a serial killer. The night that Ashton Kutcher was supposed to pick up Ashley Ellerin for a date, the very night that she was murdered, he had a terrifying brush with actual tragedy. Michael Gargiulo savagely murdered 22-year-old fashion design student Ashley in February 2001. After meeting Ashley at a gathering, Kutcher went to her house later that night, but nobody was there. In court, Kutcher recalled the terrible episode and testified about it. Despite his repeated knocks on Ashley's door, he got no answer, he said. His first thoughts were that she had departed or that his tardiness had irritated her. At the time, he didn't think anything was wrong, even though he saw what appeared to be floor stains through the glass. He failed to grasp the seriousness of the situation until the next day when word of her murder spread. Panicked, Kutcher confided in the cops, telling them, I remember the next day after I heard about what happened, I went to the detectives and said, My fingerprints are on the door. So he could finally get his fears addressed. The information understandably disturbed him. As a result of his involvement in the investigation, Gargiulo was found guilty and put to death for the double murder of Ashley Ellerin and another lady. Even after 20 years have passed, some are still wondering if Ashton Kutcher had anything to do with Ashley Ellerin's murder in 2001. Chrissy Bixler's mysterious Instagram post, made by Danny Masterson, who co-starred with Kutcher on that 70s show, rekindled the scrutiny. Bixler asked, Did you forget I was there? in her narrative. On the evening of February 21st, 2001, the very night of the murder, you contacted Danny while on speakerphone. I caught every detail. It was explained to me. You are, in my view, as ill as your mentor. Bixler's assertion that she overheard a discussion on the murder's night threw Kutcher into disrepute since it linked the actor to a larger plot. These happenings took place in 2001, although nobody paid any attention to them back then. Unsettling doubts about what may have happened that night, despite the peak renown, began to surface with Bixler's recent admission, which rekindled interest in the story. What do you think of Bixler's implications? Leave your thoughts until the end of this video. Now, let's learn about the successes, failures and controversies surrounding Ashton's career. 
success, failure, and controversy. A career-defining role for Ashton Kutcher occurred in 2003's Just Married, a romantic comedy in which he co-starred with Brittany Murphy. Kutcher realized he was a natural in romantic comedies while making this picture, and he went on to excel in that genre. The film's success, it grossed over $100 million worldwide, was heavily influenced by his on-screen chemistry with Murphy, which led to a short relationship off-screen. Picture critics were scathing of Kutcher, even though the picture was commercially successful. A reflection of the critical scorn that accompanied his commercial success, he received the Worst Actor nominations at the 24th Golden Raspberry Awards for all three of his films released in 2003. The butterfly effect was Kutcher's attempt to venture beyond romantic comedies. In the film, he portrayed Evan Treborn, a man who suffers from blackouts, and learns that he can visit his younger self. There, he tries to make small adjustments that could change his and his family's future. Despite the film's financial success, reviewers were harsh once again. No matter how commercially successful Kutcher's films were, reviewers still couldn't get behind him, writing him off as little more than a young idol. Many were perplexed by Ashton Kutcher's meteoric climb to Hollywood stardom, particularly in light of the widespread disapproval of his acting. The fact that Kutcher produced a number of the films in which he appeared was something that many people failed to notice. At the tender age of 22, he and Jason Goldberg co-founded Catalyst, a production business, in the year 2000. Early on, Kutcher saw that producing provided significantly higher financial advantages than performing alone, and he took this step to establish himself as more than simply an actor. He became an astute businessman as a result but his next big TV project almost bombed due to his lofty ambitions. A hidden camera show called Harassment was developed in the early 2000s by Catalyst and MTV. Things went downhill in January 2002 while recording the pilot episode, even though the original plan was to do elaborate pranks on random individuals. The Hard Rock Hotel was James and Lorianne Ryan's reservation in Las Vegas for their vacation. They were from Washington, D.C., when they went into their room, they were startled to see what looked like a horrific murder scene. A corpse encircled by blood. Two actors masquerading as security guards barred their way out, and another actor, this time in a paramedic costume, burst into the room. Kutcher finally admitted that the whole thing was a ruse for a new TV program, as the couple's anxiety levels were at an all-time high. It did not sit well with the Ryans. Kutcher and MTV were hit with a $10 million lawsuit which halted the harassment project instead of laughter over the stunt. Lorianne Ryan and James Ryan's nice Las Vegas trip became a nightmare, unfortunately. They were terrified to their core when they entered their hotel room and saw what seemed to be a horrific murder scene, replete with blood and a lifeless body. The Ryan family sued MTV for $10 million for the traumatic prank that was meant for the pilot episode of the show Harassment. This was on MTV. In addition to other significant charges, their case included invasion of privacy, emotional distress infliction, and fraud. Unbelievably, this wasn't the first time MTV got into trouble for an ill-advised prank. The whole affair was a major gaffe. Not long before, during the filming of another shock value show called Dude, This Sucks, two adolescent females had sued MTV for allegedly spraying them with human feces. Although MTV apologized and promised not to play the film again, the harm had already been done, and the litigation continued to drag on in court. Ashton Kutcher avoided serious consequences due to the harassment scandal, despite a series of issues. Surprisingly, Kutcher's prank program idea was still considered by MTV. They changed the name of the initiative from harassment to punk, and put the spotlight on famous people instead of innocent bystanders, which changed the whole dynamic. Punk debuted in March 2003 and gained immediate popularity. Kutcher set planned pranks for Malcolm in the middle actor Frankie Muniz and pop sensation Justin Timberlake in the pilot episode. Most notably, the joke played on Timberlake stood out. Government officials came to seize his home and possessions after falsely accusing him of owing $900,000 in unpaid taxes. The act was so flawlessly pulled off that it was eventually named third on Time magazine's list of 32 unforgettable events in reality TV history. Although it wasn't the first prank program, punk became the most watched in its day very fast. 
Season 2 alone attracted 7.4 million viewers, up 55% from Season 1. The show had the highest viewership within its time slot among viewers aged 12 to 34. As the new millennium began, punk went from being a popular program to a cultural phenomenon. When individuals found themselves in strange or unexpected situations, the term, am I being punked right now, became popular. As a result of the show's pervasive influence, the very notion that Ashton Kutcher may leap out with a camera crew became a running joke. In addition to the buzz around his performance on punked Ashton's involvement in that 1970s program was a major financial success. When the program was at its peak, he was making $250,000 to $300,000 every episode, or up to $8 million in a season. Unfortunately, things started to go downhill for the program as important actors began to depart. After Topher Grace left after season 7, many viewers believed the program had lost its essence without him as lead Eric Foreman. Additionally, Ashton opted to depart during the seventh season in search of fresh acting and producing chances. Following that performance in the 1970s, Ashton Kutcher's cinematic career was defined by a succession of parts that cemented his stereotype as the naive, attractive lead, a position that brought him money but received little praise from critics. Except for romantic comedies, Ashton's 13 film appearances between 2006 and 2014 were all forgettable. After that show in the 1970s, his first big assignment was the Robert F. Kennedy assassination film Bobby. Bobby failed to connect with viewers, even though it had an amazing ensemble of A-listers. The film bombed at the box office because audiences didn't get into the characters, including Ashton, as authentic representations of Americans in 1968. This pattern persisted in Ashton's subsequent roles, which included Open Season, What Happens in Vegas, and The Guardian. Commercially, these pictures did okay, but reviewers mostly thought they were average and didn't do anything to improve Ashton's Hollywood. Even less fruitful were his later forays into independent filmmaking with spread personal effects and the brothers. These underfunded endeavors were bombed at the box office and were widely panned. Killers, an action comedy starring Ashton and Katherine Heigl that debuted in 2010 and was heavily panned by critics, earned $98 million worldwide on a $75 million budget and was barely profitable. Despite the uncertainty surrounding his film career, Ashton ventured back into his comfort zone with no strings attached, a romantic comedy that reunited him with Natalie Portman. Despite critical qualms, the picture was a smashing success with audiences throughout the world, earning over $149 million. During this period, Ashton's personal life also took center stage in the media. How did the complexities in Ashton's personal life play out? Let's explore with me now. Ashton's personal life. The tabloids couldn't get enough of his marriage to Demi Moore, an actress he met in 2003 at the age of 25 and the age of 40. They were an unusual and fascinating Hollywood pair due to their 15-year age difference. This was particularly true considering Demi had three children from her last marriage to Bruce Willis. But when allegations of Ashton's adultery spread, their relationship started to fall apart. Their high-profile marriage ended in divorce after months of rumors and bad news surrounding Ashton and Demi. As Ashton's marriage to Demi came to an end, a new phase in his life began one that was personally and professionally transformative. Not long after reuniting with Mila Kunis, whom he had worked with on that 70s show, he found himself back in the limelight as one half of Hollywood's hottest power couple. Ashton Kutcher has maintained strong ties to Demi Moore's three kids and has continued to play the role of a father figure in their lives, even after their divorce. In retrospect, Ashton's relationship with the girls has been a source of joy for his fans of that 70s show, as he recently revealed that he reconnected with Mila Kunis, his former co-star. Their on-screen chemistry eventually translated into a real-life romance, something fans had been hoping for all along. In 2011, Ashton made a triumphant return to television, stepping into the spotlight as Charlie Sheen's replacement on the hit sitcom Two and a Half Men. How did this victory come about? What did it bring to Ashton? Let me find out. Triumphant return to television, Ashton was cast to replace Sheen after his public breakdown caused him to leave the program. 
Playing the part of an endearing, naive womanizer allowed him to showcase his talents once more. Despite the show's declining ratings and subsequent demise, Ashton's involvement was extremely profitable for four years in a row. An astute financier he is. Although Ashton Kutcher's appearances in films such as Dude, Where's My Car, and The Butterfly Effect have brought him widespread fame, his estimated net worth of $200 million comes from sources other than acting. Kutcher is well known as a leading investor in the technology sector, having provided early funding to notable businesses like as Foursquare, Shazam, Uber, Skype, Airbnb, Spotify, Pinterest, and Shazam. Even in 2015, he was a guest investor on Shark Tank, where he shared his knowledge. Even in his relationship with Mila Kunis, Kucha's digital intelligence was an asset. Ashton frequently requested Kunis to try out several dating apps on his behalf. As she revealed to Jimmy Kimmel, she reflected on the fact that Tinder hadn't achieved its full potential when we began dating. Hey honey, I've got this notion. I would much appreciate it if you could have a look at this app. The fun didn't end there though. Kunis began swiping to offer him comments. In addition, he had her test out other applications. The way she laughed, it was much like her own house. These websites are entirely his doing. Can you tell me the homosexual equivalent of Tinder? Yes, I have used Grindr. His marriage to Mila Kunis was the result of a disastrous blind date. One of Hollywood's most adored couples right now, Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis, had a rocky 2012 when Kutcher tried to hook Kunis up with someone else. Kutcher asked Kunis over to hang out since the two stars had just ended significant relationships. She had no idea he had other plans. Kunis revealed to James Corden, reflecting on the development of their friendship, that her husband had been attempting to arrange a blind date between her and one of his best friends that night. He tried to hook me up with a buddy, so he said, come over. However, that never happened. The fact that they had both been in films about having a friendship with benefits made them predictable, she joked. In an interview with Howard Stern, Kutcher explained that he had planned to remain single, but that he and Kunis became closer after his companion didn't come up. The feeling was reciprocal. According to Kutcher, it was rather clear that something was occurring. He also recalled that Kunis had just stopped smoking, so she had requested him to spray some smoke into her mouth so she could get a second opinion. He conceded that it became closer and closer as the night progressed. He helped raise more than $35 million for refugees from Ukraine with Mila Kunis. Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis contributed to the collection of more than $35 million in March 2022 in response to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. One of Ashton's most important efforts, however, is his involvement in the fight against child exploitation and abuse through the Thorne Foundation he co-founded. The fight against child exploitation and abuse. Why, intending to identify victims of exploitation and K-capture, Fenders, the non-profit organization Thorn, Digital Defenders of Children, has developed free software to assist law enforcement agencies. Over the past decade, Ashton has devoted himself wholeheartedly to this cause, and his work with Thorne has been essential in making a difference. The 2021 Impact Report from Thorne states that 3,977 victims were detected in 2021 alone, with a total of 24,366 victims identified since the program was deployed. The technology developed by Thorne is now utilized by over 2,700 law enforcement organizations. By removing abusive material from the web, Thorne's efforts aid in rescuing children from their abusers. As a co-founder and current chairwoman of Thorne, Ashton has devoted his life and fortune to this important cause. Ashton Kutcher presented the alarming reality of child abuse and wrongdoing before Congress in 2017. While his testimony was deeply concerning, it was crucial for raising awareness about this serious issue. He recounted terrifying events, including seeing things no one should have to face. According to Ashton, he witnessed a father in the United States abusing a child around the same age as his own. In one case he described, a young girl in Cambodia became a victim of sexual exploitation while she innocently believed she was just playing. While federal investigators often spend years tracking down and apprehending traffickers, Ashton boasted that his foundation's program can identify them in three weeks or even three days in some cases. Not only did he ask Congress to support a government program to fight human trafficking, 
but he also asked for money to develop this critical infrastructure. It is uncertain if Ashton's statement resulted in new government initiatives, but his dedication has not wavered. Through his 20 May 22 New York City Marathon race, he was able to raise more than $1 million for Thorne. Today, hundreds of dedicated individuals are leveraging technology to safeguard children from sexual abuse at Thorne. Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis have been in the news lately for their recent actions. He has been accused of going against his word. What are the accusations? Let's find out more. The controversies, their former co-star on that 70s show, Danny Masterson, was convicted of sexual misconduct. Five women accused Masterson of violating them in the early 2000s and filed their complaints in 2017 when the first allegations surfaced. Masterson has been affiliated with Scientology since childhood, and three of these women are prominent Scientology followers. Although Masterson steadfastly denied any wrongdoing, claiming that the women were simply seeking attention in the wake of the Me Too movement, the court ruled otherwise. During the trial, which took place in October 2022, witnesses testified about the disturbing behavior Masterson was accused of. Chrissy Bixler, Masterson's ex girlfriend, was one of the victims. Masterson's sentence, related to misconduct in 2003, was pronounced in May 2023. Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher drew attention when they requested the court to consider a more lenient approach in separate letters regarding Masterson's sentencing. In his letter, Ashton praised Masterson as a man of integrity and purpose. However, despite appeals from Ashton and Mila, the court decided to sentence Danny Masterson to 30 years in prison. This move affected public opinion of Ashton, with many feeling he had betrayed his principles. After years of working to support victims of human trafficking, Ashton's support for Masterson drew criticism. When Ashton and Mila's letters were made public, they expressed regret for what had happened. They recognized that writing letters about Danny Masterson's character had caused great distress to victims. Ashton and Myla pledged to continue to support victims in the future and asserted that they had helped many victims in the past. They said that Danny's family had asked them to write the letters because they had known Masterson for a long time. They stressed that the letters were not intended to undermine the legitimacy of the court system or the jury's decision. They asserted that the letters were for informational purposes only and were not intended to hurt victims or question their evidence. Finally, they offered their condolences to anyone who had suffered sexual assault or abuse and apologized for any hurt they had caused. However, they did not explain their motivations for writing the letters, leading many to question Ashton Kutcher's reasoning. What do you think about Ashton's actions in this story? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. We would love to hear from you. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more interesting updates. Thank you and see you in the next video.